Raj in Melbourne, Australia writes, Good day, Paul. Good day, Raj. Uh, he's Raj from Melbourne, Australia, and a great admirer of your videos. Well, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, when designing speakers, how much weight do you put on frequency response graphs versus just sitting down and listening? Well, first off, I don't design loudspeakers. <laughs> but I get the, the general nature of the question. Our speaker designer, Chris Brunhaber, who I still put up there in the top two, three, four designers in the world, knows more about, I mean, just talking with Chris. If you come on a tour and you get a chance, people always want to meet Chris. Well, it's a real pleasure because he can start going on about just about any subject. I have, I've, he's a polymath, I think is a good way to put it. Knows something about everything. Amazing guy. Chris beats his head against the wall and his heart goes out into those frequency graphs he probably spends, well, certainly months, and he starts with the drivers, and he designs every one of our drivers, and he goes crazy over getting that as flat as he can. Then he goes crazy designing the, uh, the symmetry, which I don't know, I don't want to get too deep into it because this is more Chris's subject, but if you think about it, when you have <clears throat> a, a speaker, and it's moving back and forth. You know, it's a coil of wire <coughs> with a, a magnet that's moving around a magnet. As it gets farther away from that permanent magnet, it, <coughs> it changes its force and it becomes less linear. So the real trick is to make that as linear as possible. And he, he works really hard at changing the magnetic structure, the pole pieces, the spider, the surround, all of that stuff. So frequency response first, distortion and linearity. Second, the amount of throw, the, the whole bit, cone material, all that crazy stuff. He spends months and months and months designing that. Once that gets done, then it's the crossover phase, or actually the cabinet phase first. And then Chris spends another month or two working on getting that frequency response so there's, it's just as flat as a speaker can be. Then we go to listening, and that's where I get involved. I contribute nothing to what Chris is doing for all this other stuff. I nod my head and go, yep, good, because he's right. Got to get that as flat as you can and as low distortion as you can. So that's basically the process. And then once we go into the listening phase, that's where I jump in and I can help a lot. And Chris and I hear almost the same things. I mean, we're pretty darn close. So we'll listen together and I'll, this, you know, and he'll go fix that. And so anyway, that's kind of the process of loudspeaker design, at least here at PS Audio. So I hope that helps. Thanks.